Today, I'm gonna to be taking you guys to the best dim sum in China and maybe even the world. I'm so I wanna... excited! The tea is very important. Oh my gosh. Wait, we have more food? Put us onto the histor history wall. <laughs> We're coming at you all the way from Shenzhen, China. It is a beautiful day outside today. We're in our hotel across from this theme park called the Window of the World. I'm trying to make more YouTube videos, more original content on YouTube. And if you guys are enjoying it, please let me know. What else do you guys want to see on YouTube? All right, let's go. We're gonna eat some dim sum. Let's go. All right, joining us on today's adventure is gonna be water. And uh, we're getting in our luxury, Chinese version of Uber Black. It's like, what, $8 to go 12 kilometers across the city. It's freaking awesome. Oh, water. Free water. <laughs> You already know, imported from Japan. We got the Family Mart socks, baby. Represent. All right, we just got let off and now we're uh, headed to the restaurant. And what is this? Ooh, little Maserati. Gran Turismo, is that what called? I forgot that. Oh, that guy has the uh, Hong Kong and Guangdong license plates together. Very expensive, that means he can go in between Hong Kong and uh, mainland China. Those plates, I think, start at around a million RMB, which is about 130,000 US dollars-ish. All right, we're here at Fan Lo, which is uh, the best dim sum in the world. Maybe. Dim sum, dian xin, yam cha, zao cha, dou kui shuo. Uh, these are all different iterations of dim sum, but in English, in the West, we basically, basically know it as dim sum. So last time I was here, uh, this entire waiting room was full of people. So we're here after lunchtime. The place closes at four o'clock so we can get in and uh, get the food without too much of a, a wait this time around. If you see a bunch of golden plaques on the wall, usually it's a good sign in China. And these are the awards for the uh, Da Zhong Nianping, which is basically Chinese Yelp. You must eat this restaurant type of award. All right. Most places in China nowadays want you to scan a QR code in order to order from the menu, but me, I'm still old school. So I asked for a paper menu so that we can see all the delicious menu items here with their beautiful, colorful pictures. Really get that appetite going, baby. All right, so I've been here before. They have a really, really, a pretty expansive menu. The craziest thing about this place, everything was so fresh in really big portions. This siomai or siomai, or however you want to pronounce it, was the most big and juicy, delicious I've ever had, ever. The siomai is so amazing here, chef. So I think the backside even has, what the heck? Oh, that's the red, um, uh, red. Oh, the red rice chongfen. wrapped chongfen, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. It's like the bread, so it's all separated, like the breads and stuff. The radish cake, I oh, think someone really likes I, it. I love radish cake, and gotta try that. And the little bouncy, fluffy, little brown sugar type, type okay. bread. Got the uh, rice porridge, the dough, it's like a dessert veggies, thing. chicken soup. All right, so unfortunately there's only two of us here. Um, however, I do want to try a bunch of stuff. So if we get some wasted for today, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm in the camera, and I'm making weird face, dude. I'm but so I wanna... excited. Sumai. What are those two options there? Uh, so this is plus. Like you order uh, again. Okay, okay. Uh. Okay. So a lot of people don't know this about dim sum, but although the food is the most known thing people think about, dim sum, one of the most important factors of dim sum is actually the tea. The tea is a very important part of dim sum. Dim sum kind of started as the food that's accompanying the tea time and has a long history in China, specifically in Southern China. You guys can look that up later. I'm not a historian, but we got the uh, waiter right now hooking us up here, cleaning off the cups and getting the tea ready for us. In the beginning, we were able to choose our type of tea. We chose a chrysanthemum tea. Chrysanthemum? 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 Chrysan 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 what? Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. It's called Juha Cha in Juha Cha. Ju Juha Cha. So I said it right the first time, which... No, you did it. Juha Cha. Anyways, a fun tidbit of information. Juha in Chinese is actually slang for asshole. Butthole. Don't tell you... Don't tell... How should you? Take the tea. Prepare it, pour it in this, to, and then this goes into the cup. So it doesn't actually go from the ladle into the, the kettle, it goes into this little cup into the cup. This is hot, this is hot. It is very hot. Okay, maybe we wait. Alright, cheers! Cheers, this camera. Cheers. Mm. Oh, so good. Tasty. It's very, um, very natural uh, sweetness and very, really refreshing. Yeah. I love this world. The world is amazing. You gotta do the little tea thing. Yay. 
I'm waiting for you to do the thing. What's it? Yeah. No, no, it's like this. This like symbolizes bowing. Basically, there's thank you, thanking someone for pouring the tea. The big, powerful, rich, famous people, because they wouldn't bow to like the lower level people, so they just kind of go like this. It's like a symbol of bowing and saying thank you. All right, sometimes in Chinese restaurants, they don't include the tissues, the napkins. You gotta buy them, but they're like one RMB or something. Oh man, this list looks long. I hope we didn't order too much. Gosh, dang it. Oh, who's here? Oh, Hi. Oh, hello. Oh, she's here. Oh my God, it has arrived. Look at the juicy and delicious. Mm. Oh yes, I is coming in clutch, baby. She's here. Red rice, red chongfen. Gosh, to my the hard out huge ju juicy dumplings, red red rice wrapped chung fin, the I don't know Cantonese bok choy and whatever this cake is that water likes such fluffy and delicious, and uh, we're gonna eat because we're hungry, very hungry. Eat it like you must. Wrong country. Whatever. Why you say it's like a must before the dim sum? Yeah, I said wrong country. It's just a joke. Oh, that's a joke. <laughs> Look at that. First thing we're diving into is the sumai. Oh my god, it's like big. What's the meat? Pork inside with a little shrimp on top. Pork and shrimp inside, shrimp on top. Mmm. Oh my god. So good. Next is the red rice wrap chung fin. A little crunchy in there. Uh, they got different sauces here actually. Soy sauce, sort of like a uh, fermented bean and chili oil and maybe peanut sauce. I'll go for this. I like more um, savory than sweet. Mmm! The sauce is really good. Oh my god. So good. The sauce is super good. What? So good. The texture is amazing because it has like the really crispy fried dough and then they yep. chop them like two little pieces. Yep. Wrapping the red rice. With like so the good. maybe shrimp inside, I guess shrimp or pork, shrimp and pork. Mm. Green onions inside. Oh, it smells Spice, so good. Spicy chili. Mmm, mm, so good. I mean, another one that was actually really good. It's so good. All right, next really popular dim sum that a lot of people eat is definitely the hard gout. This the shrimp dumplings here is so big, like so big, so juicy, and like thick. I don't know how many shrimps are in this bad boy, but there is a lot of shrimps in this bad boy. I think in the U.S. it's like half the size. Half size, definitely. Yeah. The hagao here is huge. Oh my god. Wait, we have more mm. food? This one seems like three shrimps inside. I noticed in the U.S. when you get dim sum, a lot of times they give you like little soy sauce you can put on mm, some yeah, of the yeah. dumpling. I realized the good dim sum doesn't need a sauce. Yeah, these are super right? juicy. Yeah, they're not dry. Mm. It's like doesn't need that soy sauce that you typically put on, I'm used to like in the U.S. Like yeah. LA dim sum places, Alhambra. I got the like black pepper beef rib. Oh man. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Barbecue pork bun. This is like such a one of my tastiest little That's a big one. simple Two. treats. Just do a little open sectioned Bump. off. Oh. Whoa. Very fresh made. Ooh. Chewy, moist, steamed bun. Not too much meat or too much sauce, but it has that sweet, probably pork taste. Uh, you know, it always has like so like not gravy, but just like this kind of sauce it's in. Dude, this is. Oh my god. I love fresh. All right, we're gonna tea, so I'm preparing another little okay. batch here. Mm. We didn't order the chicken feet. For some reason, I don't eat that much chicken feet anymore. All right. Oh, that work for a little meat. No, I'm... <laughs> I don't know why I suddenly feel so tired. I mean, we're eating a lot of... too much shenanigans, probably. I don't have any shenanigans. Do I have shenanigans? Yes. Uh, Alright, we gotta go on this beef rib here. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. I don't know. 
beef itself, breaded, wet, but peppery and yummy. This is kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Black pepper on the top and uh, it's, that's, I think it's steam. Yeah, flavor's really good. It just has that um really chewy texture. It's like not as tender as I'd love it to be, even though it's rib meat. So it's like hard to get a good chunk, you know? But the flavor is really good. Not my favorite. All right, next thing we're gonna try is gonna be the uh, radish cake. Mm, yummy. This guy in this chair across from me just keeps looking at me. I think I wanna say hi to him. Hello. Hello. Here we go. Dip in this little chili right. oil, minted green sauce. Don't be mean to... Oh my God, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot your video. <laughs> Can you just be normal? What is going on, dude? I'm gonna get another. This is I'm crazy. just chilling here, but oh my god, I need to be sit up. You don't have to sit up, just be normal, but like, you know, just sit lay down. It's fine, take a chill pill. I love this thing, it's so like simple, but texture's good. Alright, everyone watching this YouTube video, I have a confession to make. This is a very hard video to make. Water keeps laughing at me. This is a and thing I look, to do, dude. And thinks, people think, thinks I look like a dummy when I make YouTube videos. So no, I don't ask, think anything. I just feel... So, let me, ask you, let me ask you YouTube viewers something. Am I really a dummy? No, for sure. I think I'm a dummy. Water's favorite little cake though. Spongy brown sugar cake. I don't know what it is, but steam Sponge cake. Spongebob. Water calls it the Spongebob cake. No, that was what chat said. Oh, chat did. Good. Chat's funny. Not too sweet, brown sugary, fluffy. Moist, yummy. Out of everything we ate though. What's your favorite dish? Shomai, hargao, the greens, the beef rib, radish cake. radish cake. We had the pork bun, we had the red rice roll, chung pin, and the cake. I'm so full. My favorite thing, it might be basic, but this shumai is so good. So juicy, so large, so delicious. And it really like just is the best flavored shumai I've ever had. Radish cake was good. I mean, everything was really good. I think the beef could have been a little more tender, but I really love the food here, and uh, I can see why it may or may not be the best dim sum in the world. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. All right, so now's the best time, which is to figure out how much the bill is gonna be. So we had, how many items do we have? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight, eight, not items, tea, easily over $100. In the US. Total price we have here is two two forty six for all that food. Woo! Let's go! Thirty thirty five dollars. Bad, not bad at all. Uh, the food was amazing. Like I've been to a lot of dim sum restaurants. I don't know where you think the best dim sum restaurant, whether it's in some of the LA Chinatown or New York Chinatown or somewhere in Hong Kong or Guangzhou. Um, but I think this restaurant actually originated in Guangzhou. But uh, you know, it was definitely one of the best I've ever had. And I can see why people, you know, come from even Hong Kong here just to eat this restaurant. Um, it's it's very very popular and very delicious. So it's like a hundred year old history. About started in Guangzhou on this street called the what's it called Xi Xi Guangtong Yu Jie. Okay, on that street, there's a there's a there's a tea house. Oh, three uh floors, big tea house called. Oh, that's the name of the place. Yeah, this is the name. It's a restaurant. And then it's talking about how this place got like a the, like a popular and the uh, story behind it. Cool. I was just curious cool. the history of it. So it started yeah. in Guangzhou about a hundred years ago. Yes. Now I gotta ask him a question. Ceviche,全是蟹的,蟹做的,然后服务这方面,基本上都是属于属于的。我觉得是第一好吃的。然后就是在深圳这边的话,我这边的品味还是可以的,然后就是在大众点评这边,对,是每年的基本上都是必
Where do you think the best dim sum in the world is? Is it somewhere that you live? Have you traveled somewhere or had it somewhere like in LA's Chinatown or New York's Chinatown or somewhere in Hong Kong? Uh, where's your favorite dim sum place? This place, highly rated, locals recommended it to me. They told me that people from Hong Kong even traveled to Shenzhen just to eat this place. Um, but knowing a little bit about the history of it, it's very interesting to me, it's over 100 years old from Guangzhou, uh, where kind of dim sum is very known for here in the Guangdong province in southern China. It's rated very highly on the Chinese. It's rated very highly on the Chinese version of Yelp here at Dadong Nianping. And I hope you guys enjoyed the experience to be able to see and eat through this lens some of the amazing food that we had today. One thing that I learned today also is that they make all their dim sum very fresh. When you order it, they'll go in the back and make it. It's not one of the places that mainly pre-make their food and kind of roll it around the hot carts, which I think is really good. That's why it tastes so fresh, so juicy, and so delicious. All right, well, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining us all the way from Shenzhen, China. Don't forget to follow Waterland, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.